Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another episode of 10 Minutes of Football. In this time, this episode, we are talking about the man of the hour, the man of the week, the legend in the making, Kylian Mbappe. Ladies and gentlemen, after Real Madrid obviously completed their 15th Champions League win, they have now added Kylian Mbappe. Oh, my God! And not only now have they added Mbappe, obviously they're reinforcing, but this time we're actually going to sort of make a little bit of a, you know, prediction of Kylian Mbappe's legacy at Real Madrid because a lot of players have gone to Real Madrid with hopes and dreams. And some of them have just come out there with just hopes and dreams and not titles. So the question is, will Mbappe's legacy at Real Madrid be a success? Will it be like Eden Hazard? Will it be like Gareth Bale? Or will it be like Cristiano Ronaldo or more? Or something in between? Let's talk about it. Let's look at the man of the hour. Also, he gave an interview just um, yesterday and talked about his time at PSG and now marking his new chapter at Real Madrid. And also before, obviously, he starts his chapter at Real Madrid, he has to play the Euros. So we will talk about that. My name is Bozona Papi. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, yeah. Killy, 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 killy. The man who celebrates like this. <laughs> In my opinion, that celebration is. Dead wood, wood. dead wood. Bruno Fernandez! It's Fred! It's Martial! I mean, the first thing that we have to mention is the fact that this guy is probably the best or one of the best talents in the world right now. I think it's undeniable at his age of 25, he already has a World Cup. He has six domestic league titles. He's won them with PSG. He's won one with AS Monaco, his former club. And now he's looking like he is going to be stacking more and more and more at Real Madrid. But is it as easy as that? You know, the thing about football is sometimes when you think the A or one plus one, it doesn't always equals two. And I kind of want to sort of just start this by saying, I do not think Kylian Mbappe will be as successful as many may think he will be at Real Madrid. And I have my reasons. We'll get to them in a second. But the first thing I want to also just go to is the fact that in his interview yesterday, as the captain of the French national team, he was giving his um, perspective on what happened at PSG, especially on his last year at PSG. And he gave some very important insights that I want to touch on before I can cast my guess on the legacy of Mbappe at Real Madrid. So he said this. First of all, one quote that I really, really resonated with and I was so impressed by was the fact that he said at PSG, at his last year in PSG, statistically, it was not the best. But for him, considering the, considering the hurdles that he was experiencing, all the backroom stuff that he was going through, the challenges he was going through, he considered it his best season ever as a player. And uh, I had a second to be like, wait a second. What is making this young man say this thing? You know, he actually was told by PSG hierarchy and other people in the club that he will never play for PSG again at the beginning of the year because he knew he was on his last year of his contract. He refused to renew his contract. And... Um, he was very much in a place where uh, I'd just label as not easy. But he said this. He said now he looks at it. He wants to make sure that he gives 
props to Luis Enrique for picking him and uh, Luis Campos, who's the sporting director, for making sure that they stayed in his corner. They stayed in his court. They supported him, even though other forces in the club did not want him at all because obviously they felt like he had used the club and they were obviously so unhappy that he's going to walk away as a free agent and go to Real Madrid in easily the biggest coup of the summer. Real Madrid signing the biggest player for free. That was an incredible, incredible move um, on Real Madrid's part. But, you know, Rightfully so, a lot of people in the PSG camp were unhappy, so they got into a little bit of a sabotage you mode. But Luis Enrique, despite all odds, still picked him. And Mbappe was so respectful, was a gentleman to even say, you know what, I will not label my time at PSG my last year as uh, unhappy, but there was very difficult, challenging moments and moments of unhappiness. Um he actually buttoned this with a very nice saying that says, a happy man is more likely to play well than an unhappy man. So he is now smiles. He is now radiating good vibes and good energy. You can tell his chi. He's aligned with himself. And I believe we're going to see a very, very different player at the Euros because his first little test is actually the Euros. And I say little, by the way, intentionally because he went on to say in this interview right he went on to say that playing the euros is actually more difficult than the world cup Jesus, Jesus is love. exactly that was my reaction first i said huh phone care what is he saying but he went on to actually give his reasoning for this and said that tactically the teams that uh, play in the in the Euros know each other a lot more and they're a lot more familiar with what to expect. So that actually makes it even more complicated because you can prepare for your opponents with a lot more detail than say in the World Cup when you're you know chosen against uh, you're playing a group I don't know a team in your group that nobody really knows much about I don't know maybe say Ecuador versus France is a lot more like, hmm, what are we going to tactically expect this time around as opposed to, you know, France versus Poland, for example. And anyway, so that was a very interesting perspective and insight to hear him say that. Of course, he did acknowledge that the World Cup is higher stakes, higher pressure, more attention, and that also makes the occasion special. But that was kind of very insightful to hear him say that. So, uh I also learned that France has not won the Euros in 24 years. Oh, my God! And he is looking to end that and make not make it 25 or 26 years by making sure that he performs this um, summer. He said, he said um, you know, that, you know, pretty much that the fact that... Um, France has not done this, is going to give him more motivation. He's well aware that World Cup Mbappe is different from Euro Mbappe. And he actually said that the first year on his inter- when he entered the international stage, he won obviously the World Cup with France. He feels like he did not learn anything from that experience. He learned a lot more from his um, first attempt at, at uh, the Euros where he lost and also the second attempt at the World Cup where we saw him in that showdown with Messi. Arguably the best World Cup final we will ever see. I don't know if it's ever going to top that. But, you know, he said he learned a lot more from those moments of adversity and those moments of losing than from the moments of winning, which was very, very interesting to hear. So I am looking forward to see what Kylian Mbappe can do at the Euros and more importantly, what he will do in Real Madrid because... He comes in to a dressing room that's very harmonious, stable, very healthy. And I believe Kylian Mbappe is going to upset dressing room harmony. He's going to kind of make a few other players disgruntled. And Real Madrid are not going to have this easy season that they had this season. They only lost twice in La Liga to Atletico Madrid. And... um, and only one draw. And this time around, it's going to be very tough. And my prediction is Kylian Mbappe will be almost as successful as Gareth Bale. Remember Gareth Bale? Five La Liga titles. He has obviously three World Cups. I believe that's Kylian Mbappe's legacy. What do you think? My name is Bosona Papi. This is 10 Minutes of Football. We are- 
Football Power Hour.